Let me read to you a passage from the 19th chapter of St. Luke's Gospel, verses 45 to 48. It's the Gospel for Friday of the 33rd week of Ordinary Time. St. Luke writes, Jesus entered the temple area and proceeded to drive out those who were selling things, saying to them, It is written, My house shall be a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. And every day he was teaching in the temple area. The chief priests, the scribes, and the leaders of the people, meanwhile, were seeking to put him to death, but they could find no way to accomplish their purpose, because all the people were hanging on his words. That's from Luke chapter 19, verse 45 to 48. We are led to think of the person of Jesus. As our Lord often pointed out, the prophets were routinely persecuted. This opposition they encountered was due to their proclaiming the word of God and the repentance that this required. Elijah stood inflexibly for Yahweh against the widespread worship of Baal, and the upshot of his famous confrontation with the prophets of Baal was his execution of them. This stand for the God of Israel brought swift persecution and the threat of imminent death. Jeremiah encountered tremendous opposition because he predicted that disaster was coming to Jerusalem unless the king and city surrendered. This military subjection was being visited upon the chosen people because of their sins, and Jeremiah proclaimed that they must submit to what God had determined and surrender to the enemy. This message brought great persecution on Jeremiah. A similar pattern is to be seen in the prophetic career of Micah. John the Baptist reproved Herod for his marriage, and ultimately it meant death for him. The case is somewhat different with our Lord in an important respect. Our Lord condemned the practices of the scribes and the Pharisees, but the principal source of opposition to him lay in his claims about himself and his own authority. The truth that our Lord was increasingly proclaiming was the truth about himself and the saving blessings he would grant to those who believed in him. He himself was the way to the Father and the only way. Our Gospel that I read earlier gives us a specimen of this pattern. We read that Jesus entered the temple area and proceeded to drive out those who were selling things, saying to them, It is written, My house shall be a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. And every day he was teaching in the temple area. Luke chapter 19 He was assuming lordship of the temple, and in, G in John's account of this event, he claimed that the one God of the temple was his own father. The leaders could see that acceptance of his teaching meant acceptance of the supremacy of his person and of his authority, and this they would not tolerate. At our Lord's trial before the Sanhedrin, our Lord was asked if he was the Christ, the Son of God. He replied that indeed he was, and that they would see him coming seated at the right hand of God. He was sentenced to death for this claim as to his person. When the leaders brought our Lord before Pilate, the charge was that he was claiming to be a king. It concerned his claims about his own person. When pressed by Pilate, they stated that he claimed to be the Son of God. At the heart of their rejection of Christ's teaching was their rejection of his claims as to his very person. All of this means that the person of Jesus is the centre of the Christian religion. He is the one whom we look to in the way no one would look to Moses or any of the prophets. They bore splendid and holy witness to God and his truth, but Jesus bore witness to the truth about himself. 
and in and through himself to the truth about the Father. Indeed, the Father bore witness to him too, both at his baptism by John in the river Jordan and at his transfiguration on the mount towards the end of his public ministry. Christ spoke of the coming of the Holy Spirit and said that he too would bear witness to him and remind his disciples of all that he had told them. He would lead them to the complete truth. The Christian approaches the person of Christ not simply as one would approach a great, indeed the greatest, prophet. Islam makes this claim about Muhammad, which of course the Christian in no way accepts, that he, Muhammad, is the greatest of the prophets. Well, no. In respect to Jesus Christ, the Christian accepts totally his claim to be not only man as we are, but the very Son of God. The same in nature as the Father, and therefore equal to him in his person. The person is div- his person, the person of Jesus, is divine, and this divine person has taken to himself a human nature, so that the man Jesus is incomparably the supreme fact of the visible universe. To know and to be in union with him is the greatest of heavenly and earthly blessings. Eternal life consists in it, as we think of Jesus cleansing the temple and teaching the word to the, to the people, hanging on his words, let us think of the grandeur of his very person. He is man, of course, but in the first instance he is God. His person is divine, and this divine person took to himself a human nature while retaining his own divine nature. He is our Lord, our God, and our Redeemer. Let us therefore entrust ourselves to him and live according to his word.